Reading from the big book. Trembling, I stepped from the hospital, a broken man. Fear sobered me for a bit. Then came the insidious insanity of that first drink. And on Armistice Day, 1934, I was off again. Everyone became resigned to the certainty that I would have to be shut up somewhere or would stumble along to a miserable end. How dark it is before the dawn. In reality, that was the beginning of my last debauch. I was soon to be catapulted into what I like to call the fourth dimension of existence. I was to know happiness, peace, and usefulness in a way of life that is incredibly more wonderful as time passes. Near the end of that bleak November, I sat drinking in my kitchen. With a certain satisfaction, I reflected that there was enough gin concealed about the house to carry me through that night and the next day. My wife was at work. I wondered whether I dare hide a full bottle of gin near the head of our bed. I would need it before daylight. My musing was interrupted by the telephone. The cheery voice of an old school friend asked if he might come over. He was sober. It was years since I could remember his coming to New York in that condition. I was amazed. Rumor had it that he had been committed for alcoholic insanity. I wondered how he had escaped. Of course, he would have dinner, then we could drink, then I could drink openly with him. Unmindful of his welfare, I thought only of recapturing the spirit of other days. There was that time we had chartered an airplane to complete a jag. His coming was an oasis in this dreary desert of futility. The very thing, an oasis. Drinkers are like that. The door opened and he stood there, fresh-skinned and glowing. There was something about his eyes. He was inexplicably different. What had happened? I pushed a drink across the table. He refused it. Disappointed, but curious, I wondered what had got into the fellow. He wasn't himself. Come, what's all this about, I queried. He looked straight at me, simply, but smiling. He said, I've got religion. I was aghast. So that was it. Last summer an alcoholic crackpot, now I suspected a little cracked about religion. He had that starry-eyed look. Yes, the old, bi old boy was on fire, all right. But bless his heart, let him rant. Besides, my gin would last longer than his preaching. But he did no ranting. In a matter-of-fact way, he told how two men had appeared in court, persuading the judge to suspend his commitment. They had told of a simple religious idea and a practical program of action. That was two months ago, and the result was self-evident. It worked. He had come to pass his experience along to me, if I cared to have it. I was shocked, but interested. Certainly I was interested. I had to be, for I was hopeless. He talked for hours. Childhood memories rose before me. I could almost hear the sound of the preacher's voice as I sat, still on still Sundays, way over there on the hillside. That was, There was that proffered temperance pledge I never signed. My grandfather's good-natured contempt of some church folk and their doings, his insistence that the spheres really had their music, but his denial of the preacher's right to tell him how he must listen, his fearlessness as he spoke of these things just before he died. These recollections welled up from the past. They made me swallow hard. That wartime day in the old Winchester Cathedral came back again. I had always believed in a power greater than myself and had often, po and had often pondered these things. I was not an atheist, few people really are, for that means blind faith in the strange proposition that this universe originated in a cipher and aimlessly rushes nowhere. My intellectual heroes, the chemists, the astronomers, even the evolutionists, suggested vast laws and forces at work. Despite contrary indications, I had little doubt that a mighty, pa mighty purpose and rhythm lay, underlay all. How could there be so much of precise and immutable law and no intelligence. I simply had to believe in a spirit of the universe who knew neither time nor limitation. But that was as far as I had gone. With ministers in the world's religions, I parted right there. When they talked of a God personal to me who was love, superhuman strength and direction, became irritated and my mind snapped shut against such a theory. 
To Christ I conceded the certainty of a great man, not too closely followed by those who claimed him. His moral teaching most excellent. For myself, I had adopted those parts which seemed, which seemed convenient and not too difficult. The rest I disregarded.